Okay. Live from the NHA conference in beautiful downtown Cleveland, may I present Chef AJ! Hey. Hey. in the world why to eat a plant-based diet. So you all know why to do it, but how to do it. So today I'm going to make for you not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven recipes. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, snacks. So here we go. If you want to eat healthy, you have to have an instant pot. This is a non-negotiable. Yeah. If you want really, yeah, if you want to eat really healthy, you need two. Most of us have three because now they come in three sizes, three, six, and eight. So we're going to use the eight and we're going to use the three. We have a six, but there's no room on the table. So we're going to make the cauliflower bisque. The cauliflower bisque was last night's soup, and I got to tell you, it was really good. It was, it was, it was almost. I mean, you know, you you know your own. Re it was very, very good. It was like. 98 out of 100, it was just, it was, it was beautiful. It's a beautiful soup. And so what we're doing here with the reason I remember, unless you're like single and have no chance of ever getting together with someone, then I would get the eight quart because you need to batch cook if you want healthy food ready. And the, the fact is the three quart is great for little jobs, it's great for travel, but you're not gonna be able to make my recipes in the three and you're barely gonna fit them into the six. The eight is the best bang for your buck. You can cook like six or eight artichokes in here, and the thing is, is you can do smaller recipes in an eight, but you can't do bigger recipes in a three and a six. So stop being such cheap motherfuckers and just get the eight quart. So, you know what I'm saying? Seriously, I don't get a cut anymore of Instant Pot Soap, but I'm telling you the truth. Or get another company's eight quart, but get, people say, Chef AJ, what knife, what pan, what blender? The biggest and the best you can afford. That's always the answer. Anyway, so I have the broth already in here. We're using some box broth from Engine 2. Nothing wrong with this. It's just that, in my opinion, it doesn't make that much difference in a recipe that's flavorful. And I feel that mine are flavorful enough that water is free. I'm Jewish. Water's free. I'm going to use water. You know, this is too expensive because you needed two box of these. And then you got all the packaging. You know, you can make your own broth in the Instant Pot in 10 minutes just using scraps of vegetables. But this is fine. I'm not bashing this product. It's just I try not to use a processed and, you know, packaging if I can. But if you want to use a packaged product, this is terrific. There's no salt, there's certainly no oil or sugar. So when you have time, try to heat this up in advance, it'll go quicker, but we've just had this set up. So what we're gonna do to make cauliflower bisque is we're gonna start with a cauliflower. And you just literally put it in here. There is no reason to cut anything up. Cutting and chopping is for suckers. People that have too much time on their hands. Why cut stuff up? when you can literally just cook the Chef AJ way and put your whole potatoes right in. There is never a reason to chop, okay, in my opinion. So that's how I do all my recipes, even in my first book on process. Now, this calls for a large sweet onion, and this will make a difference. This is not a sweet onion, that's okay. It's a red onion. The taste will be slightly different. They want me one already chopped up, no problem. But the truth is, is if we had a whole onion, boom, it would go in. I don't like to chop anything. Partly I'm lazy, partly I have trigger thumb and every now and then I can't even hold a knife. So this is a great way to cook. So we're gonna add our spices. And you, by the way, you're gonna get all the recipes on a PDF. I, you're not getting them, it's, it's paperless. I promise you, you'll get all the recipes. So what I like to do is I buy my spice, most of us, not all of us, but a lot of us buy our spices in jars like this. And by the way, you can get a jar like this for 69 cents empty at the Bed Bath & Beyond store. When this jar is empty, I measure out the spices for all the recipes that I'm gonna do over and over. Most of us don't eat 30 different dinners a month. We have a few repeats. I make this every week. I measure it out, put a little, little piece of tape on it, pull it out when it's time, and then I don't have to measure anything. But I did measure these out in advance, and I'm using some dill. I'm using Benson's Table Tasty, which is my favorite of all the salt-free seasonings. She has a new flavor called roasted garlic, which is even better, and it's supposed to come out any day now. And smoked paprika. Smoked paprika is very, very different than regular paprika. And if you're doing my recipe, please, please don't make that one substitution. It's a whole other ball game. And especially if you're doing salt-free cooking, this is this is like a really important spice. And hopefully you like paprika. If you don't, then I guess you can't make this recipe taste exactly like this. <laughs> Chipotle powder, and that is just gonna make it yummy. You can always make it spicier. Uh, what else, we need some garlic. Where is it? This cat is making too much noise, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. It's, it's like driving me crazy. Where's the garlic? Here we go. Oh, okay, we got some garlic. I don't know how many. You could. Oh, I wanna show you a little culinary trick. I'll show you later, but here's the garlic. Just throw it in, and that's it. 
Always go to 11 o'clock on your Instant Pot to close it easily. Boom. Just realize that there's two sides. A lot of people burn this because they put it on the stove, their stove is on, they burned it. They have bits for left-handed and right-handed people. Now, the Instant Pot company keeps changing their buttons. So, it used to say manual. I don't know what all these buttons mean. That would require effort and reading, which is just too much for me. What I do, is Sharon McRae here? Sharon McRae is the mother of the three kids. I'm just going to give you her phone number because <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I will. Seriously, let's, we'll look it up on my phone. I'm going to give it to all of you. When you don't know something, just text her. She's on her phone 24 hours a day anyway. And when I have a question like how many minutes to cook rice, I text Sharon. She's a PCRM food coach. And I'm, I'm, really, I'm, let's, I'm going to really give you her number and let's everybody in the room text her. It would be so funny. I'm, I'm going to do it. It's, it's area code 424. I have to look it up. But She's on my phone. But I know that there's a pressure cook button. I'm going to push that. I'm going to do about 12 minutes and set it, forget it. Now, the potatoes that I use in this isn't what I normally use, but it's going to be fine. I, these are the Japanese sweet potatoes. They're a little bit sweet. It's fine. Usually I use the Hannah yam, but I was told by someone who lives here that here they're called Jersey yams, which is why she couldn't find them. The truth is you can use the regular orange sweet potatoes. It's just if you can really <coughs> use the Jersey yam or the Hannah yam and the sweet onion together, you get this pure white, beautiful soup, but it always works. And by the way, if you don't have a cauliflower, use broccoli, use asparagus. It doesn't matter. And there's six copies of my book left, and it, it shows you all the variations. Set it, forget it. My husband can do this. Seriously. It, this is so easy. This is, how we, this is how we roll. This is how we cook. So now let's do a, another recipe in the small Instant Pot. This is called, and by the way, six out of my seven recipes are from my book that's out there. One is going to be from my previous book called Unprocessed. And I do have a new book coming out next month called, which is tomorrow, by the way. It's, it's called um, A Date with Dessert. It's a, a date sweetened a, a book of all the recipes when I was a pastry chef. So here's the three quart. And in it, we already have our plant milk. I'm using an unsweetened almond milk. Really easy to make your own plant milk, guys. It's something plus water. So oat milk is oats plus water. Brown rice milk is rice plus water. Almond milk is almond butter or brown almonds plus water. You never have to buy it in packaging if you want. This packaging, again, has packaging, often has salt, sometimes could have oil, sugar, and weird things you can't pronounce, like carrageenan and vitamin pound, you know, whatever. So apple pie rice pudding. What would rice pudding be without the rice? So you can use any kind of rice you want, but I always use leftover rice. Whenever I make rice, I always measure out about four cups, put it in the freezer, so whenever I want to make this recipe or my chipotle bean burgers, I've got four cups of rice. This is a brown rice, it smells really, really good. And we're just gonna plop it in the pressure cooker that has the almond milk in it. If I had some vanilla, thank you, Mary. This is, this is my Vanna White here. She's gonna, flip, she's gonna flip all the letters for us. Now, if I had my, um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Okay, raisins. So, I love the yellow raisins. I just think they're sweeter than the, the purple raisins. One cup. And by the way, this was measured out. And while this may seem like a gargantuan kind of thing, it only took a couple of us 30 minutes to prep this. It wasn't that much work. So, so you know, because I'm a chef, I don't measure really usually with measuring spoons. I just, you know, you just kind of know. So usually I just use apple pie spice, which is a blend of spices. But that's, it's, I, I just, I've this for years. I don't have to measure. But, <laughs> Yes, apple pie rice pudding is in the book. Now, so they didn't have apple pie spice, so it's really just gonna do a combination of cinnamon and nutmeg. But if you can, apple pie spice is a really lovely spice, but read the ingredients when you buy spice blends, because I did this demo once in Texas, and nobody would eat it, and I looked at the apple pie spice, and the second ingredient was fenugreek, which is not supposed to be in dessert. It was terrible, so make sure you like the blend if you buy a blend. And the smallest amount of cardamom. You, can't, you can totally overdo cardamom. So now we've got to get the apples in there. And I didn't want to do everything in advance, because I want to show you some really cool tools. You know? That is what makes this way of eating and living sustainable. I know there's a lot of people out there with great chef knives and great um, technique, and they teach courses. But I taught the blind vegan cooking for years. I was a volunteer at the Braille Institute. And I learned that if it was easy for a sighted, uh, easy for a blind person, it's gonna be just as easy for a sighted person. So um, I'm gonna show you a bunch of cool tools. How many, when they were little, used to do this to see who they would marry? A, yeah, B. Oh my God, poor Charles, it was a B. Is there a Bobby here? Is there a Billy? Is there a Brad? Is there a Brian? 
was hoping would be sweet. Does that mean I'm your husband? Yeah, <laughs> and he might be watching. So this, many of you have seen this cool tool, and it's, it, I don't know what it's, an apple slicer. But this one that Victoria gave me, look how cool it is. It doesn't make just eight slices. This looks like it makes a lot more. This is a Vidalia Chop Wizard. I guess it was originally meant for Vidalia onions, but it can even can slice beets and sweet potatoes if the slices are not being too, too thick. And so what you can do with this is you take the slices, and it comes in different size grates. This is about $20 of Bed Bath & Beyond. I'll use the small one. You notice how the beets were cut? They probably used something very similar to this. And you know, Meredith, I might ask you to help me do this once I show this so that I can get on to the next thing. But you just press it down, and then you've got these beautiful things, and then what happens is there's also a measuring cup on the side that can show you when it's uh, two cups and when it's full, it's four cups. So I want to work over here, and then maybe you can work over there. Meredith, and, oh, um, I'm gonna pimp out all the single girls here right now. There's three of them. I've got an Aries, a Gemini, and a Virgo. Are there any takers? They're all vegan, they're all rocking hard. Oh, Taurus, oh, you guys are looking too. You didn't put your name on the list. Oh, no, Gemini. What? Gemini. You want the Gemini? Yeah. Oh, are you ready? Oh, you're looking. Okay. This is in reserve in advance. But if there are any gentlemen here that are interested in. Oh, wait a minute. I got another tourist, too. I just saw. And then she's shaking her head. Not me. Not me. Not me. Okay. Before I get onto the watermelon, I want to show you. I always buy my garlic peel just because I'm lazy. But to peel it, and there's somebody who's put something on Facebook with this little paring knife. I tried that, guys. It didn't work for me. So what does work for me is when you get the clove with the skin on, you just take a knife, any knife. It doesn't have to be a sharp knife. You just press it down hard, and then the paper just comes off. So that's that's one way to do that. that okay, so how to cut a watermelon. So this next recipe is called the OMG Watermelon Salad. It's actually three recipes in one. How you cut anything round is very important, especially if you're blind, because you can really cut yourself if you're trying to cut something that's moving, right? And almost all melons are round. So what you do, anytime you're cutting an onion, even a carrot, a bell pepper, is you make what's called a stabilizing cut. The first cut is you cut it so that it's no longer round. And always, you know, you know safety for the cloth, right? So if you do cut yourself, you're not cutting the tip of your finger. So what I'm gonna do first is just cut a little bit off the bottom. And the reason I'm going to do that, oh, look, doesn't this look like Mickey Mouse? Oh. <laughs> it's because now it stands up. It's a heart. It's a heart. It's no, a the other piece, the watermelon. The bottom of the watermelon. That's because Shane is here. Because everywhere oh. Shana goes, yeah. everywhere yeah. Shana goes, there's a heart. And Shada is one of the single ladies, by the way. But all right. So now I have a flat surface. It's not going to roll around. And this is how they cut the fruit at True North, where they're cutting like 40 pounds a day of honeydew watermelon cantaloupe. And so then what you do is you just kind of go around oh like this. Goodness. And that is how you do it. And of course, when you have time and skill, you're not going to get a lot of, I mean, I didn't get too much of the red. You're not going to get only the green, but you're going to get, and then when you see the little white, you can cut that off. And this is the easiest way that I've ever seen to cut a honeydew, a watermelon, anything round. And of course, a sharp knife is imperative. It's probably the most important thing because when people cut themselves, a sharp knife is not such a bad cut. A dull knife, that's an emergency room for sure. Sharp knife often just isn't. So there we go. Do it all the way around. And that's how we get it to easily. Or you can just do what I do and buy it already peeled, seeded, and chopped. And then you don't have to do anything. So while exactly. I'm cutting this, I'm going to just tell you something that happened. In the kitchen, I was giving Chef John, he wanted my book, so I was signing the book, and there was a, a one of the guys working in the kitchen, I think he was a really handsome, hulky uh, Latino guy, and he was saying to me that he was really surprised how good the food was, that he didn't expect it to be so good. And But he said that he didn't think he could eat like this, because he didn't think he could give up bacon. And I said, is that really the only thing? He goes, yeah, that's like my favorite you know, thing, bacon. And I said to him, his name was, was um, Juan, I said, there's worse things in life than having to give up bacon. And he said, well, like what? And I said, well, let me tell you a story. 
So there was this priest and this rabbi. Don't you know? Don't you know that when a joke, when a, when a joke starts with there was a priest and a rabbi, you know it's going to be a good joke. Okay. So a priest and a rabbi, they're on an airplane, and uh, they notice that they're, you know, obviously a priest, obvious by the outfit, the rabbi has a little yarmulke, and they happen to just be sitting next to each other. And then when you do this, you just cut this off. And the priest uh, says to the rabbi, Rabbi, I know in your religion that you cannot uh, eat pork. Have you ever tasted pork? And the rabbi said, well, priest, you must promise never to tell my congregation. But one time before entering rabbinical school, yes, I did have a BLT. And the priest says, don't worry, rabbi, your secret is safe with me. And so the rabbi said, well, priest, you know now what I have to ask you. In your faith, you have to be celibate. Did you ever break that vow? And the priest says, well, Rabbi, you prom must promise never to tell my congregation. But one time before entering the seminary, yeah, I, I actually did have sex with a woman. And the rabbi goes, sure beats bacon. So, the, uh, you know, it's not so bad giving that stuff up, right? Because uh, e even Dr. Goldhammer won't ask you to give up sex, I don't think. All right, so what well, that trash can. I'm going to have to throw this away because you need a clean workstation. Sure beats bad. All right, that's a good one. See, not, then you only have to say the punchline from now on. But you know, what people like about bacon isn't that it's a part of a pig or a pig's butter or whatever. They like sugar, fat, and salt. That's why you like everything, and that's why it's so hard to do this diet because you take out the sugar, fat, you know, fat, and salt. We put in other good stuff. Excuse me. So you guys saw what I did. And so now what I'm going to do is cut it into, this is the OMG watermelon salad, by the way. So now I'm just going to cut it into whatever size cubes I feel like. Try to make things the same size, though. And, and what I'll do is I'll cut up a watermelon every week and then just put it in one of my really good Tupperwares. And then it's just it's so much more inviting and easier to eat when it's already cut up. So in the OMG watermelon salad, how much watermelon you use, how much cucumber you use, it's really up to you. That's the one recipe that doesn't give you exact measurements because it's really what you like. Usually I do like about twice as much watermelon as cucumber. And then the mint and the lime juice is up to you as well. Now, there was one person, believe it or not, that didn't like mint and they used basil in it and they said it came out really good. And if you're making this for regular people, you know, the others, one of the things you can do is yeah, <laughs> is put in feta cheese. And I don't mean real feta cheese, but like Neil Boschitter type feta cheese, because that would go great in the salad. You did this all already? I'll finish. Wow, and look, look how beautiful the little cubes are. It's so great. And then now we're going to put this in. Oh, I hope they all fit. I don't know what, what apple we're using, but if you can, always find the sweetest apple you can for a dessert recipe. If you live somewhere where you can find the Envy apple, that's probably my favorite. Wow, that's a lot, but that's okay. Ooh, look at this. Now, this apple pie rice pudding can be dessert, it can be breakfast, and it can be served hot, cold, or room temperature. It's really good with my pear whipped cream. If you're not familiar with me, I'm, I'm running a 14-day free series right now called Feel Fabulous Over 40, which you can sign up for for free at any time, and I have a, pear, a peach whipped cream now that I'm, that's good on this. So now, we've got to put it on pressure cook. And, oh, there's an up and down button, and so this is just going to be five minutes because the rice is cooked. If you don't want to cook rice, you know, Trader Joe's sells a delicious brown organic rice, and you just, yeah. What was the name of that cheese? Well, I, Miyoko Shinner has a, uh, a company, and it's called Miyoko's Creamery, and I'm pretty sure she makes a feta. Hi, Liv, how you doing? So that's that. All right, so one recipe, two recipe. All right, I'll finish cutting this in a bit. So now how about the cucumber? I cut up most of the cucumber already. I really recommend Persian cucumbers. You know, the, the cucumbers at the salad bar, they were a little bitter, and that's because the skin on a regular cucumber tends to be bitter, it tends to have a lot of seeds. Persian cucumbers, they have seeds, but they're not, they just, they're not wet, they're just better. Why are these better, Shada? Shada's Persian. It's because they're Persian, so we're just gonna put that in. So, I, was, I didn't know that I had this machine here, so I cut them by hand. But I wanted to show you how cute it looks with the other size blade. The baby blade is so cute. And there's other companies that make these like Sharper Image, but this one seems to be the one that lasts the longest. Usually what I'll do is I'll just cut it in half and then put it in. 
and then you press down. And it's very safe too, especially if you're worried about cutting yourself. But it's, I mean, the, they had to have used a tool like this to make all the beets and the cucumbers and the jicama look the way they look. They might have had an automatic one. But this thing is pretty cool. It comes with this little white thing to clean. We'll see if we can find it for you. This little piece. Yep. And so what you do is it does get, thank you, it does get caught sometimes, the, the stuff, and you just scrape it down. <laughs> like that. That's how you do it. And, but you can see, look how cute, you know? Mm -hmm. Really nice, especially for salads. The more you cut stuff up, the more likely you'll be to eat it. I'm really a, a big fan of chopped salads using the Holland Bowl Mill. Two different things that you're making at the same time right now. I'm lost. What? How do you make recipes? Oh, okay, so I put everything in for the cauliflower bisque. I put everything in for the apple, almost instant apple pie rice pudding. And now I'm making the OMG watermelon salad which basically has only four ingredients, watermelon, cucumber, lime juice, and mint. So let's just see how this ratio looks right here. Now, the thing about watermelon, it, you, you know if you've cut a watermelon that it does start to weep and you know gets, the, you don't wanna serve this, if you're making this for tomorrow's potluck, you make it right before, at least the cutting of the watermelon part. But what you can do is when it starts to get to the point where you're like, God, I don't want to serve this, turn it into salsa. What you do is you take a jalapeno pepper and you cut it very finely and then you make salsa with this. It's really good. Or what you can do is just throw it in the Vitamix blender. Notice how I subtly put in Vitamix blender instead of just generic blender. You put it in the Vitamix blender and then you can make a, a, a slushy or a smoothie. So the limes, we're not giving up their juice. So we're just using what the chef gave us. This looks okay, it's from Italian. You gotta trust it, it's Italian, right? What's the name brand of the chopping? Vidalia Chop Wizard. Thank so you. you put as much or as little lime juice as you want. Lime juice I find is always a little bit better than lemon juice because it's just sweeter. I'll move this away. And so I love tools, Bed Bath & Beyond. They should, they've never given me anything they should because they, they, I promote their store so much because they have everything you really need. One of the things is, is really nice, it's called herb scissors. And herb scissors, they're like $12 on Amazon. They look like a regular pair of scissors, but instead of two <coughs> blades, there's actually eight blades. And so what you can do is you can cut herbs really quickly and get like a chiffonade cut, whereas doing these by hand is gonna just take me forever. So if you're gonna do herbs by hand, you stack them. It goes quicker. Or you know what else is good? Is to just get a pair of scissors at the 99 cent store, not one that you use to cut your dog's you know, whisker. You know, I, everybody has that pair of scissors for those kind of tasks, but one that's gonna be dedicated just to food, and a scissors works great for cutting herbs. So that's my favorite thing to use. So fresh mint is the best. The way you do chiffonade is you roll it up like you're rolling a joint, I mean, uh, a, um, like a magazine, a newspaper. I would not know about that. And then you cut these little ribbons. I know there's, there might be children present. Here we go. And so then you get these little things. But you get the idea. The more mint, the better. But uh, the herb scissors makes it go really fast. Or if you have really good knife skills, you know, boom, boom, boom. I'm kind of cutting on a wet shopping board. The thing about the knife, this is how you do it. Like the guy was teaching me how to do the walking stick, and this is this is, this is knife. The, the, the tip of the knife always stays on the cutting board. None of this, guys. It never. It's almost as if it doesn't come up, and you just move your shoulder. I see all these people cutting like this and like this. No, imagine the knife is stuck to this, and this is all you can do because it's the back of the knife that's sharp anyway. See, that's how you cut. And if it's, if you're lifting this up. That's, that's unsafe, so that's how you do it. You never take the tip off the cutting board. I like using the Yulu knife. Oh, the Ulu knife is great for herbs. Okay, so let's show you how this looks like. And so if you gather up, uh, I wanna give away 16 bottles of vinegar, so if, if you get my mailing list back to me, we're gonna pick 16 names at random. We're just gonna like go boom, 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 and uh, that's how it's gonna be. So this is a really, this is one of the most refreshing salads in the world. And by the way, cucumber is not a vegetable. You know that, right? It's a fruit. Anytime something has seeds, it's a fruit. Cucumber, okra, bell pepper, tomato, zucchini, and eggplant. These are actually fruits. They have even a lower caloric density than, whoops, oh well, than vegetables. So, so that's our first recipe, and it's so good. Regular people, like I say, like it. If you find a piece of... 
if you can if, if you can find a really pretty piece of mint, you know. You have steam coming out of your pressure cooker. That's good. That means it's working. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, number one. That's the OMG watermelon salad, which you can turn into the OMG watermelon smoothie or slushy or the OMG watermelon salsa. Uh, would anybody like to earn this? Now you're too full from lunch. We can, yeah, come on up. You can have it. And you're the only one that raised your hand. So, well, too late. Maybe I'll give you some. Too late. All right, here you go. See? There you go. Enjoy. Okay. Uh, you know, you're not a nurse. Speaking of nurse, I got a joke. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. She's, so you'd say a subject, and I remember a nurse. So there was the only. I, this joke is not about a nurse, but this joke was told to me by a nurse. Anybody ever heard of the Optimum Health Institute? I was there in Austin, Texas, in the NERF. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you've been there? Yeah, it's great. It's great. I've been there in San Diego, too. She, um, she, she told me this joke. This is one of the cutest jokes. There were these two little boys in the hospital, six years old, roommates. And so one of them says to the other one, he goes, what are you in for? And he says, well, I'm here to have my tonsils out tomorrow. He goes, well, don't worry about it. I had that operation a year ago. It's not a big deal. You, you'll wake up, you won't remember anything, you get to have a lot of ice cream, please don't worry. And he goes, oh, okay, thanks, if you got through it, I'm sure. And so he goes, well, what are you in for? And he goes, well, I'm here to be circumcised. <laughs> and the other boy, his face turns white, and he goes, well, what? He goes, well, let me tell you something. I had that done when I was a few days old, and I couldn't walk for like two years. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? All right, so I'm gonna move the watermelon away. I think your electricity went off because both of your pots are not working. Oh, no. The electricity went off? Yeah, I think they're... Okay, hotel staff, um, call somebody, please. Yeah, I, I had a feeling this would happen because of, because of the power, so what we'll do is... You know what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll cook this one somewhere else, and we'll just cook this one. All right. Yeah. The thing is, is we need somebody to turn the power on on stage. All right, so we'll just put this over here. Set right there. Okay. I just don't want anybody to turn on. All right. Uh. There we go. Are they coming? Can't do anything with that. Oh, the thing. Oh, that one's cooking over there. You have, you have to improvise. Sometimes you have to cook in, in bathrooms and things like that. Are there any plugs over there? I'll cook it over there. But I'm still going to need a plug for the um, for the food processor. You know what? Oh my! I cannot lift this. Ah, look at the men. They're rushing. This is what I like. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> I told you. After all, I'm just, I'm just a female. I can't, I can't be expected to do such things. I, see. Okay. I mean, a lot of times I think men are you kind of useless, but every now and then, when you need something moved, when you need a jar open, when you need the trash taken out, they're really good to have. Let me go program that. Yep, that's true. Okay, thank you. Actually, I think he should get a vinegar for helping. Most of them are spicy, one isn't, so I hope you like it. Yeah, there you go. What flavor would you get? Teriyaki, that's not a spicy one. Oh. Oh, garlic. garlic, that's good. Very good. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm giving out, thanks to Thomas Allen, who almost always watches my live stuff, 16, now 15 bottles of my favorite balsamic vinegar, California balsamic. If you go to the website, californiabalsamic.com, if you place any size order, you will get two free 1.8 ounce samples. They also have three out. By the way, Thomas Allen is the cousin of Karen here from, 
from Bluffton, South Carolina, and I hooked up these long lost cousins this guy, this guy. Oh by God. doing yeah. this thing. We're good now? Yeah, we should be. Okay, I took two of the things away, so. So anyway, um, the three ounce bottles are perfect. You can get them through TSA, and they're plastic, so they don't break. So what we're gonna do is, do you have that other little piece of paper? Okay, yeah, great idea. All right, so this is, this is perfect. So it's completely fair now. Let's give away three more. Okay, um, Shada, what's your favorite number between one and 50? Okay. 26 is Ruth Baker. Oh, Ruth. Are you here? Oh, are you here? Yeah. Right here right okay. Run. I'm just kidding. All right. Um, can we still get our name on there? Yeah, you can still get your name, but it's just quite a I think your name's on there. Oh, it's Jane, oh. pick another number between 1 and 50. 13. Oh, yeah. 13? 13 is um, Mona Burke. Mona Burke. You have to be present to win. All right, Mona, congratulations. And Michelle, pick a number between 1 and 49. 27. 27. 27. See, this is fair. I'm not looking at it. Linda so. Ayo. Oh, Linda. Linda. Yeah, Linda. Yeah. Congratulations. All right. So now, let's get on to another recipe. This was added. This is a bonus recipe because I'm like, I'm in a hotel. Why not do this? So one of the easiest things you can make to have for breakfast after you have your vegetables, if you remember yesterday's presentation, is something called overnight oats. Easy overnight oats, and the possibilities are endless. These little jars you can get at almost any hardware store, Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond. They're, about, they're called bowl jars or curd jars, or you could actually use a bowl. These are about four cups. Same size, but coincidentally, is what your stomach holds, which is about four cups of food. We've got two cups of oats here. Now, these honestly look like instant oats to me because they're so small, but that's okay. But you, you don't need instant oats to do that. You can certainly just use the rolled oats. The steel-cut oats would be very, very toothsome if you did it. We're going to add two cups of a non-dairy milk to this. Because it's, it, I just remember this recipe because it's two, 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 two. Two cup oats. And if this is not sweet enough for you, instead of adding refined sugar like maple syrup or agave, why don't you just put in, shh. Thank you. Like agave, maple syrup. Um, instead of using that, how about raisins? How about dates? Or maybe use just a little bit of unsweetened fruit juice in exchange for some of the plant milk. Two cups of blueberries, fresh or frozen, it doesn't matter, or any fruit, really, but if, but if it's a big fruit, you know, cut it up a little bit. And then, two teaspoons of chia seeds. Why are we are using the chia seeds is because they are a thickener, and this will make it into a pudding, and it, it will actually cook over, not cook, but it will get a cooked-like te texture overnight in your refrigerator. Now, you can eat these raw right now because Rolled oats are really steamed and flat. They're not truly raw. You wouldn't want to do that with old oats or the steel cut oats, but you mix it all together. Oh, some seasoning. How about a little cinnamon? That's nutmeg. That would not be so good. I always smell spices just because I've had some bad experiences when I picked up cumin instead. And didn't, didn't. It's, it's not very good in oatmeal, but my friend Darshana Shacker, the Forks Over Nice chef, said, oh, no, that's really good, but if you're not used to it. So you mix it together, and it's going to be very liquidy, but what's going to happen is the chia seeds, they work these, they're magic, and believe it or not, the balsamic vinegars that I'm giving out, if you use a flavor like lemon, like one of the sweeter flavors, or peach, you can sweeten this without using any sugar. So this is basically what most people eat for breakfast, it seems, anyway. But this way, you don't have to cook it. When you take it out of the fridge in the morning, it would probably be ready in a few hours. But you, take, you do it at night. You take it out of the fridge in the morning. And this would serve two days for my husband. I don't like to eat oats for breakfast, but this would be something that I would eat probably for a, more like a dessert, like a pudding. And you can make several jars in advance. I've done up to three because when I'm gone a long time. And like I said, that it's delicious cold, but it's, you can also reheat it. And this is this is pretty cool. You know, if actually, if there's somebody that's, well, if somebody's got an early flight, I can give them this and they can just take it, you know? Mm. Yeah? Uh -uh. She, she raised her hand first. Do you ever, you can put this in the refrigerator in your room. Yeah, but I would, I would, I, really probably shouldn't give away this jar. It might be Wanda's, but Wanda's so generous, she doesn't care. <laughs> she is so generous. She even said I could, I could auction off Mark. <laughs> I mean, that's, how, that's what kind of woman she is, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, anybody, nobody here is from um, Butte, are they? I can't take this one. Butte? Butte. No. Isn't it in Montana? Yeah. Is there anybody from Butte? Good. All right. <laughs> I just, you know, I, I hate to, you know, uh, so there was this, because I was thinking of Wanda and Mark, so I started thinking married couples, you know? There was this couple married a long time, like Wanda and Mark, you know? It loved each other so much, and they were from Butte, Montana, and they were driving down the 405 freeway, visiting their son in Los Angeles, and they got pulled over by a policeman. And so, you know, the husband rolls down the window after the cop knocks on it and says, I need to see your driver's license and registration, sir. And the wife from Butte, who happens to be really hard of hearing, said, what did he say? What did he say? The husband said, dear, he needs to see my driver's license and registration. Oh, okay. So the policeman looks at the license. He says, hmm, I see you're from Butte, Montana. And the wife goes, what'd he say, what'd he say? And he says, dear, when he looked at my license, he noticed that we're from Butte, Montana. She goes, oh, okay. And the cop looks at it again, he goes, you know what? I had the worst sex in my life in Butte, Montana. And the wife goes, what'd he say? He said he knows you! <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I don't know why thinking about one and Mark made me think of that joke. Because we used instant oats, you can see that it's pretty much done. If there's going to be a little more liquid that's going to be absorbed tomorrow. And so, um, here's your breakfast, young lady. If you want, make, I would say this jar probably costs up to a few dollars. Maybe just make a donation because you're taking her jar. Like, you know, three dollars if you're Jewish, too. I can say that because I'm Jewish. I study stand-up comedy. You are allowed to do your own race, your own disability, <laughs> your own sex. It's only inappropriate when it's somebody else's. Okay. <laughs> but, see, and those of who I, those I offended are, are silently going, you know what, it is true though. Okay, no, just kidding. All right, so now let us go to, um, using the wonderful vitamins here. And we're going to make the barefoot dressing, which appeared a few nights ago. And again, it was so close. I'm not, I mean, their effort and their food was so great. It's just that when you make your own recipes all the time, you kind of know the little nuances. And I think the only reason it didn't taste exactly the same is my guess is they're not using the vinegar that I'm going to show you, which is a, a Napa Valley Naturals. So uh, let's see how we do this. Hey, all you guys in Facebook land, how you doing? All right, here we go. All right. So why would you say Napa Valley, Napa Valley, yeah. California? Well, here's the thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very honest because I'm an Aries and we're honest. <laughs> California Balsamic, and the, by the way, there's other wonderful companies. And I, if you have a company you like, there's Bimon Paz, there's Olive Tap, there's 41 Olive. There, the, 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 there's, by me, there's one called uh, Olive Asadi. So a lot of them make their own, and a lot of them draw from like a mother company somewhere else. So my thing is, is that I want people to eat as many vegetables as possible. And most people will not eat, at least at the beginning, a lot of vegetables in a large salad, unless they have a delicious dressing. And not everybody wants to go to the trouble to make the dressing like we're gonna make now. And yes, you can buy bottled dressings from Forks Over Knives without SOS, but with the shipping in the glass, some people think it's too expensive. So with a very good quality balsamic vinegar, sometimes that's all you need. That and maybe a squeeze of lime or mixing it with, with uh, lemon or lime and, or some mustard. So the ones that you're buying from the company that they have done something with, meaning they've, they've added some some flavoring, they're gonna be a little bit more expensive. They're probably too expensive to, for most people to use every single day ad libitum, right? But this Napa Valley Naturals, which you can get at most natural food stores, at least by me, you get it at Whole Foods, you get it at Sprouts, not so much at the regular market unless you live near what's called Gelson's. You can certainly buy it online. And in my book, on the, in the last chapter, I have a bunch of discount codes where you can buy this by the case. This bottle ends up being I've never seen it for more than eight dollars. This is not bad. It's thick and reduced. So vinegar tends to be very acidic, very sharp, and some people like that flavor. I never did, so I never liked oil and vinegar dressing or balsamic vinegar until I tasted this. What this is, is it's reduced. Now you certainly could go to Costco and buy that big gallon thing of their balsamic, which isn't bad, and you could cook it down and reduce it yourself, 
which means you just boil it, boil it, boil it till it's thick and syrupy. But I found that when you think about how much you're losing, you're not saving that much money, and it's taking you a very long time to do it. So most vinegar is 6% acidity. This is 4%, so this tastes very sweet, but there is no sugar added. The sweetness comes just for grapes. And so when we're doing something like barefoot dressing, which calls for a cup and a quarter, if we were buying one of those company's vinegars, that would be like what, like a $25 bottle just to make dressing. Whereas I don't mind using $7 to do this, but does that, does that answer your question? Now what I recommend is wherever you live, there may be a, a vinegar and oil store near you. You wanna ignore the oil, but go do a tasting. If you come to the Live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference, you can taste every flavor. And don't forget the $100 uh, code if you do come in the $100 donation to NHK. But it's fun to taste the flavors because they come in all kinds of sweet, I mean, they come in chocolate, they come in jalapeno. They're, they're, most companies that do this have about 30 flavors. So they're all good companies, they're all reputable. The reason I like California Balsamic right now is because he tended to have more savory flavors and, and most of them have the fruity flavors, and I like the savory flavors, like teriyaki, Gilroy garlic, curry, basil, cilantro, dill mustard, because they could be used in place of sauce. So like if I'm having a grain dish, like rice and vegetables, I can just put a cup, literally a couple of tablespoons. A little goes a long way. So that's that. So we're going to now make the barefoot dressing. This makes a, quite a lot of dressing. Three fourths cups of lime juice and this is a two cup thing, so we're going to then fill it to the two cup mark because three fourths plus minus, yeah. So that's one and a quarter cup. So you can see this work uses quite a lot of the bottle, not all of it. And there's still probably a fourth of the bottle left. And this is great for roasting vegetables, by the way. And it's, it's wonderful. So we'll put that in there. And I wanted to cut the sweetness a little bit. Some people think it's too sweet. If it's too sweet, don't use the pears. I'm going to use a quarter cup of an unsweetened rice vinegar. Make sure you read your labels because a lot of the rice vinegar actually has sugar, people don't realize. And so if you've ever gotten sushi, even if it's vegan sushi, you could be like, oh my God, it's so sweet. That's that sticky rice. They generally put sugar in it in most places. We're gonna put a half a cup of an unsalted mustard in. And the mustard we're using is the one they use at True North and it's called uh, West Bray and it has no salt. And that's what it looks like. We're gonna use a whole cup of nutritional yeast. That's a lot, but this makes a lot. Now I know that Dr. Goldhammer's not a fan of this, especially for people with GI stuff. In this particular recipe, you just can't remove it. There's too much. If, if it, but what you can do is, a, a few weeks ago on YouTube, I did the cheaters version of this, which makes less and which has no nutritional yeast. And then the pears. So I usually buy the jarred pears at Trader Joe's because I love the jar because what I'll do is I'll make this dressing and I'll give it to neighbors. But this is fine. These are the organic pear halves from Whole Foods. Almost every store I've been to, even in small towns like Texas, they usually have pears in their own juice. When you use fresh pears, the problem is they're generally not sweet and then you have to roast them, which you could do, but it, it calls for five pear halves, but these are so small, I'm gonna put them all in. And then of course, my um, I use five, yeah, I use, in Trader Joe's I use five halves. It, it kind of doesn't matter, I, I don't, I wish I wasn't that. No, yes and no. That's a good question. So what, we, what I do with the liquid is I put it over here and I, I get about a half a cup, of, which is about a half a cup, and then I add my chia seeds. And I did this earlier because this is gonna create the slurry to thicken the dressing. If you don't put the chia seeds in, it'll be fine, but it sticks better to the greens if you put the chia seeds in to make this slurry. The only thing that's missing is, um, it's, it's, I do a half a tablespoon. When you do a whole tablespoon, it's so thick it doesn't come out of the bottle. I'm just looking for the garlic. Oh, here it is, okay. Now, it calls for shallot. Um, they didn't have it, that's okay, so I just put more garlic in. If I had a little piece of red onion, that would have worked fine. So I believe that's all the ingredients. It's very easy to make once you get all the ingredients. It's called barefoot dressing because I served it to a little kid that didn't like salad and he said it knocked his socks off. There you go. Mm. What I do? It's embarrassing when the CEO of Vitamix is there and you're fucking up their machine. <laughs> oh, sorry, I should have said fucking. I should have just said messing up. But I, I figure I'm going home now. <laughs> what are they going to do to me, right? Tell me I can't speak. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, NHA also stands for not having HA. <laughs> right? Okay. What is going on? Is there something in there? Yeah, on the highs, do you have it? Low, yeah. And walk it. 
because you can't see plastic through plastic. Uh, uh, uh. You know? Think about it. Yeah. You can't. Pick, pick one of those. It, yep. Always bring the manufacturer <laughs> instead of your own user there. So what we're going to do is we're processing this into a flour-like consistency. We're not going to keep going because if we kept going, it would eventually turn into nut butter. And so after we get that in, then we're going to add the cocoa powder. Good stuff. <laughs> With cocoa powder, like oh everything God. else, always get the best that you can afford. And I'm oh going to just whiz that in right now. How much cocoa powder? A half a cup. And then dates. Always make sure they're pitted. I always give them a good squeeze. Huh? I'm making brownies. Now, what I like to do is, this is a great last minute dessert if company comes. Is that recipe? Is the clock finished over here? It's finished? Yeah. Okay, do you, do you know how to release the pressure? So she's, the Instant Pot's over there, it's finished. She's releasing the pressure for me. And I'm gonna finish this recipe and then I'm gonna get on an airplane. I ain't got time to take a fast train. So now what we're doing is this. All right. Now, there's a little brownie pan that has 24 squares. It's called a silicone brownie pan. And I love to use that because what I do is I take this, you smush it together, and in the brownie pan, there's little squares, and then you set it down, and then you can take a walnut half and press it, and then you have like this perfect little brownie. Okay. You know? Who's the cutest guy here? Come on, come up again. <laughs> cutest guy, 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 G. Well, no, wait, she's pregnant. <laughs> Pregnancy trumps everything. That's the problem when you have a cute guy, is you end up getting pregnant. Okay. So, so that's probably how that happened. All right, so, so we don't have a brownie pan, so what we can do is you know this is ready if you can squeeze it together. No baking. No baking. And then if you can break it apart like this, it should probably go a little longer. So who's got, who can, who can catch? See? She said she could catch, but could she catch, didn't yeah. catch. That's a far throw. Yeah, I could catch. <laughs> this is a better row. See, the men are brave. And all the men have caught it so far. Well, when you stick your hand out, it's not exactly catching. Little kid. You want a big, do you like big balls? You cannot lie? <laughs> oh, is that, it? That's a big ball. You should taste it. You're welcome. That's so that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Your parents raised each other. Your name is Joey. Joey. You, Joey. you can taste it in front of the audience and tell them if you like it. If you don't, just spit it out. It's okay. Really good. Yeah. Really good. I'm not trusting you again, Roz. You want me to try for real? The AB guy wants. I can do it. Actually, the AB guy should have them delivered because without them, we wouldn't have this. So that's basically it. I mean, I don't want to keep you guys any longer than necessary. What? The other things. Well, you're going to get all the recipes. Now the other thing's ready. But see how much seven recipes in an hour with complete chaos. And uh, if you learn nothing else, you learn that you can substitute plastic for cheese. <laughs> so who says that I'm not a, a teacher? All right, but I guess um, I got two cups of dates. Please. Yeah. Um, oh, more, more vinegar. Quick. Um, we got how many more? Eight bottles. We gotta give out. We're making. We're just gonna make little balls like this for the guys. Better and cheaper. Um, I'm gonna say 33. Um, 33 is. Um, Manju Goroda. Oh, Manju. Okay. Yeah, we gotta go. Um, all, of the, all of these recipes will on. be on the can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. All of the recipes are gonna be on the National Health Association website. Okay. There's a button for recipes. It'll say 2019 NHA conference. It'll take about four to six weeks at the most, and we'll have them posted for you. Of course, if you buy the book, you'll have the recipe immediately. Yeah. Yeah, and 117 more, and they're available. Uh, 49. Um, that's in on the process? 
This one's in unprocessed, the other six are. Jean Schumacher. She's outside. Oh no, she's inside. Nice. Number one. Number one is Chris Ebert. Chris Ebert? Are you the tennis player? Chris Ebert. Okay. Number 32, that's one of my favorite Number numbers. Number 32 is David and Jennifer Bond. Nice. Okay. Nice. How many more we got? We have um, four more. Um, 47. Number 47 is um, Peggy Crawford. Whoa, nice. Uh, Low uh, numbers, low. Low numbers, okay, uh, nine. Number nine is Natalie Bookowitz. Oh. <laughs> oh, good, the pregnant lady, yay! Nice. Um, uh, 41. Um, 41 is, see, this is um, Holly Shiveny. Nice. Now let's see if we can get a guy to win. What number would a guy be? What's a manly number? <laughs> We did one. 40 is a manly number. 40. Um, 40. That's got to be a man. Um, Florence Rini. Florence? Florence. Where's Florence? Is she not here? Going once, Florence. Going twice. Are you really Florence or are you pretending to be Florence? Florence Rini? <laughs> oh, okay. She's just quiet. She's, she's ladylike. <laughs> we have one more. Last one. One more. Well, I think it should go to you for helping. So that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.